Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. A little delay there. Whatever. I'm here. Rachel. What's up? I'm back in the boxing gym like crazy. Yeah, so you, whenever, I know you're feeling it when you post it, you know? It's like he had a good day. He's having a good week. He's in there. He's back in his groove. You've been gone for a week. You feel like mm-hmm. you fell off a bit? No. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I've i been losing weight pretty consistently. It's going good. Good. Um, I, I, uh, I've been going, I've been in the gym hard, boxing hard. And that, that's important for your timing and all of that stuff. I will say this, though. I have something to say. Uh, and it's not. slightly racist, but I have to say it, okay? Um, I'm not And I admit this. right now, I will admit right now that this is slightly racist, okay? But I have to say it. I'm going to make a racist slash cultural uh, observation here, and it has to be said for everyone out there. If you were in the boxing gym and you asked me to spar, and I even think that you are Mexican. I'm not sparring. So it's like a backhanded compliment. No, <laughs> no done sparring with Mexicans. Okay? Done. You can't, you can't hang with them? I'm doing this for the love of boxing and to lose weight. I'm not in there fighting for the honor of my family. Okay? I'm not in there fighting for the pride of my country. Is you get in there with a with a, with a Mexican guy, spar not to. And by the way, I'm 270 pounds. These guys aren't as big as me. You get in there, 147, 154 <laughs> pound Mexican guy. You go up to him. He's like, "Hi, I'm Hector." And you he he's very yeah. soft spoken. It's facts. This is the way it goes. Very soft. And then you get in the ring and you turn around and his eyes are like, and he's looking. He's like, "There's something I can kill with body shots." I'm like, I got to work after this. What the fuck is going on? And then after that, they come over. Like, you're the guy from TMZ. They want to take pictures and all of that shit. And you kind of like, yo, get off me, fam. Get off me. You going to make me go MAGA. Get off me. Like, it, it just bombing on you. Hooks, hooks. Can't hurt them. Can't hurt them. Don't get hurt. Won't get hurt. Black guys, we in there. We get our pride gets into it and the whole nine, right? Boom. It's like the whole thing happens and we get... Probably, whatever, but there's an under mind. Full on, if you want to get ready, if you want to get ready, spar a Mexican guy. But now I'm over it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm past the sparring the Mexican guys part of my boxing career. I won't do it anymore. If you even look Latino at all, I'm not going to do it. Like, it's, it's culturally, I can't spar you. Y'all, it, I'm just bombing on me. I got bruises on the fat parts of my stomach. I didn't think I could be hurt to the body because it's too much fat. Wrong. They found a way through that. Bam, bam, bam. Like, like that. Bam. Hit me. And now I'm out the gym for a couple of days. Can't go back. Can I ask you a question? What? Is it that it's just particular to this culture of people or are you not that good? You always say that. No, I don't. That's a lo- you, that's you do. a logical question. You, you, do. you do. No, 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 no. You, you always say that. I, I, I know. I listen. I don't need you. I know that I'm a good boxer, and everybody that's fight, fought with me knows that I'm a good boxer. But I, I don't expect that from you, because you're too pussy to fight Hannah B. <laughs> so until you, you can't see. You know what? You know what you are, Rachel. You know how I, I, um, what am I? I, I put you in the category that Coach Booker used to put people in back in the day. Let me tell you what happened. We were. I was in my football uniform or we were talking about football and coach was like, uh, he, a, a, a friend of mine was like, man, because on the freshman football team, we hadn't won. We, we were like 0-2 or 0-3 or something like that. And coach was like, man, uh, or my homeboy was like, man, uh, y'all suck, whatever. <laughs> coach Booker heard him and he goes, hey, does he play football? And I was like, no, sir. And he was like, well, tell him to shut the fuck up then. It always be them Rudy Poo motherfuckers who can't do shit. That talk the most shit. You're right. And you fall into the category of a Rudy Poo motherfucker 
who can't do shit. All you I, do is criticize, criticize, criticize. I can't box. And it's because I have a I have bad shoulders. They pop out no, a socket. Just, just. I can do God, rumble. Damn it. Doesn't mean I can't Don't fight. Don't talk to me then about I do my rumble, boxing. And I actually am like, actually, rumble's been quite therapeutic for me. But girl tried to fight me at the Crawford match. <laughs> I didn't tell you. That. And you backed down. No. See, I'm not going to. No, 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 no. I didn't back down. There was no reason for me to. So it was right before Crawford was about to fight. Maybe right after, right before Eminem was about to perform. And I'm coming back from the bathroom and I'm walking through and everybody's in the aisle and I'm trying to get to my seat. Mm-hmm. And so I squeeze through and I put my hand on this guy's shoulders, kind of like moving through. And, and was she was name. like. Don't you motherfucking touch my man, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. As I was yeah, passing to her to go to my seat close up. So I mm-hmm. thought about saying something and I was like, the thing speaks for itself. Let me go to my seats all the way up to the front while you sit back in the back and enjoy this view. Wait, wait, wait. There's no wait, 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 it's not necessary. Wait. So it's she punked you. No, she didn't. So what? she punked you. Why am I going to fight a girl because hey, she said, don't, don't talk touch to me my man. about fighting. Don't touch don't my man. Don't talk to me about fighting. You need to give her a, you need to give her one of these? I look bitch, back. Bitch, I said I look bitch. back. I look back bitch. and I was like, <laughs> nah, <man. You laughs> like, size her up. please, please. Well, was she a middleweight? 160, 165? What do you think? She might, like she might have been like, she might have been like 145, 160. 145 and you, you looked at that and you're like, I don't want these problems. This girl probably from. I looked at it and thought, I e. look cute. I'm I'm going to walk up to the front where my seats are. I'm too cute to fight. I'm too cute mm. to even be arguing see? with her see? right now. See, this I'm is what I'm talking about. I'm too cute to even be arguing. Why Rudy am I going to. Rudy Pooh motherfucker who I can't nobody, do shit. Nobody talking to wants me. your man. Nobody wants your man. I'm in there with pro nobody boxers. Nobody wants. And you talk me. And you just, you getting punked at the fight. You're Rudy Pooh. It's not punk. I should have known you would say that. I should have known. You're I'm not Rudy, Rudy. Nah, you got nah, one you, more you. time to to Rudy Poo me before I roll up <laughs> on you. <laughs> you got one more time. <laughs> I remember, oh, I looked at my homeboy. I was like, God damn, because that was embarrassing. Because everybody could hear. <laughs> He's like, Does he play football? <laughs> He's like, No. Well, tell him to shut the shit up then. Always coming from Rudy Poo motherfuckers shut who can't do shit. Sh- I was like, God. Shut the shit up. Shut this shit up. I don't know why. That hits a Coach little Booker bit harder. It hits a little yeah. bit harder. <laughs> it's what Coach Booker told him. But look, my face is all fucked up from boxing. I got a bust lip. I got a, it's a, I got this from the, the young, and I will say that this, this guy's a very nice guy. He's a good, he's a good fighter. He's like seven and up. Um, his body shots were killing me though. Like they really hurt. Uh, I bet but they did. I've been, I was sparring with the young heavyweights in there. Shout out to Ray. Shout out to Jack. Shout out to Tommy. Shout out to Jessica. A lot of the young fighters out there at uh, Polina Boxing out there. We getting them ready as they embark upon their careers. We got a young heavyweight, 21 years old. We. Jack. Oh, no, Ray. Yeah, we. I'm into fighters now. I'm into managing fighters. We got a young heavyweight, 21 years old, Ray. <laughs> we got a young middleweight, Jack. These guys, future of boxing. And I get in there with them. I, I mix it up. You know, for the two and a half rounds, three rounds that I can go at this point. I'm good for four. I'm good for four rounds. That's not bad. See, I complimented yeah. you there. So what nah, weight class nah, you, are you, what are you considered? What? What's what the weight class? You, yeah. Nigga, use your motherfucking mind. What are you talking about? What, like, get, you know what? <laughs> See what I'm saying? A diss. A diss. A diss. What are you considered? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Rudy Poo <laughs> We got a show to do, <laughs> do. We got a show Alright let's get to the Olympics <laughs> China won't go away um, <laughs> You really <laughs> all want With different cultures today <laughs> bro, China won't go away The United um, States is leading The medal count 95 to 70 but China got 28 goals, and it seemed like they all from diving. I was watching the Chinese ladies dive. They were diving their asses off. We can't do shit with the diving. <laughs> America, I, don't, I didn't watch diving, or I'm not watching diving. But look, we got was, 27. We're only one gold behind. 
Yeah, we still got basketball. We still got women's basketball. Hopefully they'll win. Wimby's playing right now. It looks like he's playing good. Finally, Tommy, the world's number one Wimby fan, uh, Tommy Alter, is talking shit in the group text about Wimby playing well. I just don't understand the mechanism of Tommy Alter. I don't get it. But <laughs> Wimby's doing well. We got more goals coming up. Maybe maybe we'll win the four by one. Are we going to win the four by one or will the Jamaicans or somebody else win? Are we going to win it? Wait, I saw the Jamaicans. I don't know if that was the men or the women. One of the one of oh, the teams. Oh, they already ran the four by one. Well, it could have been a semifinal. You know, I'm I'm not. It's hard to keep up to date. Every time I turn it on, it's like ping pong. Oh, uh, ping pong is one of the most fun things to watch. They it's have in their own me. Olympics. <laughs> they have their own me. Olympics. One of one of the Jamaican teams, uh, either stepped out of bounds or ran or dropped the baton or something. Oh, something happened shit. with them. They did not advance. Yeah. In the yeah, four yeah, by one, so I'm reading it right now. The men or the women? The men. Yeah, I saw I saw the headline. Oh my lordy. I thought oh, you would have come daddy. in here. I thought you would have come in here strong with that. I've been you watching know how you too been much. hating on that. You've been hating on the Jamaicans. I've been watching too many other events. I missed it. I, I was waiting for the final. Uh, you know, I, I, man. Shout out to the brother from Kansas City, um, Quincy Hall. They fall. That's what they did. And, they fall. Mm -hmm. uh, Quincy Hall, who won the 400 meter uh, final at the Olympics. He won gold. I posted a video on my Instagram of his brother and his family celebrating. Beautiful to see them celebrate. But also, what a gritty, gutty race. Did you see him win the 400? I did not watch it. What's going on, man? Rudy Poo. Rudy I think Poo a lot of people will under I think a lot of people will understand that when you try to turn on the Olympics, it's hard. Or they're like, oh, coming on tonight at eight o'clock. A lot of the Olympic coverage that I've been catching is on social media. That's how I knew about the Jamaican team. And don't Rudy Poo me. You didn't even know that the men didn't qualify. Okay? You didn't even know that they fell. I knew that. Who knew that? I knew that. You knew it, but at the same time, I will say this. The final of the 4 by 100 which I knew hadn't happened yet, I knew that. You try to act like it happened. It didn't happen. Here's the thing. Watch the Olympics. But Support you didn't watch, you didn't watch the semifinals. You didn't watch the semifinals. I don't watch I don't a lot hear. of semifinals. Okay, whatever. Well, I don't watch a lot of finals. <laughs> you don't watch the Olympics, period. You didn't watch that. By the way, I'll tell you this, though. Seriously, you can watch the Peacock app, though. I, am on, catch up. I am on the Peacock act app. They have the highlights tab. But <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> I'm not over the last podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, I have the app. That is what I'm watching it on. I'm not watching it on TV. I'm trying to catch it on the app, thinking that I'll be able to get more. And it's just not happening for me. So, anyways. Try to catch it when I can. All right, so he won the, the 400 Jamaicans meters. The Jamaicans did, did not run? qualify in the four by one. This is a disastrous Olympics for Jamaican sprinting. Is it not? I, like, it all is. jokes aside, isn't no, this no, bad? No, no, It is. It is. Mm. Hmm. So it looks like Shikari and Gabby Thomas um, have taken the U.S. into the four by 100 relay final. That is great. Everything is shaken out. Uh, pretty good. It's one of the best Olympics ever. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Is but is this also probably the one game. that you paid the most attention to? Probably so. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that I, I played paid attention in the past, but you just have more ways to pay attention now. So probably so. Yeah. It's it depends. Like when it's going to be in LA, it's going to be so much easier to catch it because we're here. With depending on where it is in the United. In the world, with the time difference, it's harder to watch for me. But I like that this is the most you've watched it and you're enjoying it. The stories are really yeah, great right. coming out of it, going into it and coming out of it. Yeah. Also, just this dead period in sports is hitting harder for some reason. Normally, this dead period, there's always a dead period. But this dead period right now where we only got baseball, and I've been watching baseball, but with no NFL, no NBA, you know what I mean? Like, this dead period is hitting a little harder now. Well, uh, you don't have, football. like, it's literally around the corner. Football is here. Yeah, Football's like here. Weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go to Vegas to see LSU game? LSU-USC? I would love to. First game? Hell yeah. We got, we got, we all hooked up. We all hooked it's up. It's the first game? Wait. 
What weekend is that? Labor Day weekend? <sighs> I, re- I rescind the invitation. No! If the chicken niggas would have asked you to go. No, <laughs> if, if, the, if the chicken niggas would have asked you to I'm go. Look, See, I'm going to look at the schedule. I, 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 want, I want y'all sure. to know. I've been I to one know. game with them. Rachel went to see like LSU versus McNeese. Oh, September 1st. Let's Roots. go. We going. The, with the chicken niggas. She went to see like LSU McNeese with the chicken niggas. I asked her to go to Vegas to see LSU USC. And I'm coming. And she's like, so let me check get me schedule. a ticket. Let me, let, let me get my tickets. Give me my tickets. I'm coming. Um, No. I went to celebrate Justin Sylvester's birthday. That's why I went there. It didn't matter who they were playing. I was there for my friend's birthday. And I this will be the there face. representing. I will be there representing <laughs> in Vegas, mm-hmm. September 1st. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to know what you think about this. Mm-hmm. Trump went and did Aiden Ross's stream. Yeah. Aiden Ross is a very popular streamer. Mm-hmm. He's not quite as possible as popular as Kai Sinat, who is the most popular streamer in the world. Uh, Aiden Ross did Trump's stream. It was the most popular stream of all time. I think it had like a half a million concurrent viewers or 900,000 concurrent viewers. They said that's the most popular stream of all time. I don't think that's actually true, but yeah. you're going to say my bad. Well, I was going to yeah. say for Aiden, is it the most popular or just period? I can't remember what they were saying, but okay. I heard someone say this was the most streamed thing that's ever I- existed on YouTube slash kick slash whatever Aiden is streaming on now, whatever. Um, it seems as if, it seems as if on the heels of that, to reach that demo when we're talking about younger bowers who are normally less compelled to vote, it seems as if Kai Sinat was contacted by Kamala Harris's people to go on her show. This is what Kai said. Then on top of that, I got the fucking secret service calling me five times, nigga! I don't know goddamn shit about politics, my nigga. I don't want nothing. I got, hey, I'm gonna keep it a stack. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I don't give a fuck, okay? Listen, I had a bad bitch that I've been trying to get on for like the last three years, the last two years that I haven't, I haven't spoke to in like a year. I haven't spoke to this girl in so goddamn long who gonna have the audacity to text me. We need you a part of the campaign. At first I was talking, I was thinking she was talking about like a game, a video game, like a, a modern warfare game um, or some shit. Or if not that, a clothing brand. I'm like, what campaign? Shorty gonna say, Ah! We're not going to get into details. <laughs> Say it right now. If this some way, somehow, something was to go into where I do the stream of politics, I'm going to be 100% honest. I'm going to sit on my stream and say, why did you guys call me? <laughs> hey, you know, I don't know. That's enough. Cut it off. <laughs> that's, that's enough. Love Kai. Rachel, two things. We'll okay. get the bullshit political news out of the way with this, and then we'll talk about the actual political news that we didn't get a chance to talk about the last time, which is Harris deciding on Tim Walls as a running mate. Tim Walls as a running mate. I'm putting the T in there. I know. I keep doing the T thing, too. No, yeah. no. I keep doing Walls. Uh, a little bit of hubbub about this. Several different ways you could offer analysis of the entire thing. What do you think? I have a lot of thoughts. I, I, is he in a trailer bed? He streams from different places. Okay. I feel old every time I watch Kai. He's screaming. Every time I see a clip of him, he's screaming. And I just, I just don't get it. But what, you know, I'm not his audience. Um, I appreciate actually what he said. For me, I don't think the response should be from these campaigns to get the most popular person to endorse you or to interview you or to post about you just for the sake of posting. What you want is somebody who's informed, who actually is excited about you and supports you. So I actually respect the fact that Kai's like, 
I don't understand it. I don't know it. I'm, do I wish, do I wish he would be more engaged and he could reach an audience? Absolutely. But if you're not, then don't pretend that you're something that you're not. And I appreciate that. And it's a little disappointing to, to see that, oh, because Trump did this and it was so popular. Let me go to the other streamer who's super popular just for the sake of getting views and not for people to actually understand or um, engage in the issues and the policies. We're losing our way a little bit, in my opinion, when it comes to reaching the younger generation or the, there's a disconnect. And I like that Kai said, I'm not going to do it. Interesting. So I can respect that opinion. I 100% disagree. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same opinion I saw Charlemagne have. Um, Mine is? Um, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. And why? I'm <laughs> just kidding. Because you, you always think, and, you always um, think me, I have an issue with him. That's why I say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Um, and me and him talked about it a little bit. Uh, but this is the way I look at it. Number one, Kai's decision not to, to, to host her. First of all, when you watch that video really closely, he never explicitly says that Kamala Harris reached out. He never explicitly says that they asked him for that, right? There's since been more reporting by other people who are asserting that that's what happened, but he never specifically said that, number one. Um, but let's say that she did. I don't see any problem with it. As a matter of fact, I think it makes a lot of sense. To me, going on Kai Sinat's platform is not about Kai Sinat. It's about the reach that he has. Now, you sure. might ask how substantive is that reach in terms of politics? The demos, are these likely voters, right? Some of them are not going to be likely voters because a lot of them are going to be under 18. Like a lot of them are going to be under 18. So some of them are not very likely b- voters, right? All right. And then after that, even the people that do vote uh, or are of voting age, should I say, eligible to vote, are these people, are these people that are going to be motivated to vote? Are they unregistered? Are they going to see Kamala Harris on Kai Sinat or see Donald Trump on Aiden Ross? Then get up, go register to vote, then take the time, fill out a ballot, do all that, and then vote. You don't know. You don't know. Uh, young people vote at about a clip of 50%. Um, the average voting turnout in America is about 66. So they vote under the average of people. Uh, who vote. It's hard to get them turned out. But you still got to try to reach them, right? And the reality is, amongst the brutal youth, I'm talking about the ridiculously young, he is probably the best conduit or one of the best conduits to get to them. So I don't see why you wouldn't try. Okay. I, I can agree with that. You would try to see if he has interest. According to Kai, the Secret Service, which I don't know the Secret Service is who's reaching out to you, but the Secret Service, he said, had reached out to him five times. That's where I start to have an issue. There's nothing wrong with under, like trying to just, you know, like gauge his interest, right? Is he, is he into politics? Is he curious? Does he want to use his platform for other, even if he's not into it, he might say it might be important for other people. Let's just see. There's nothing wrong with that. But the moment you have to ask five times, to me, that seems forceful. The moment that he's now going on his platform, it almost as if it's bad. It looks bad to me. It looks like, well, Trump was able to get on this popular streamer. Kamala Harris can't get, even get on this. It looks a little bad to me. And if I'm going to say something negative, you know, I respect that he doesn't want to be a part of it because he's not into it, but also he's bash. it's in a way he's bashing the campaign, which could have a negative effect on Kamala Harris because he's like, they're begging me to be a part of this and I keep telling them no. That's where my issue lies with it. I think that you want to be a part of something who's somebody who supports you or is at least curious or interested in it. It makes no sense as much as the, the fact that his platform can reach so many people, which is true, it's not worth it if he's not into it, in my opinion. Right. And so, I like that he's not for sale because I'm sure that, like, I've had offers from certain campaigns, not Kamala Harris, but certain campaigns like, you know, are you interested, like a influencing agency will say, are you interested in using your platform? I think it was for Biden. Um, 
don't hold me to that, to you, to, to, to uh, promote Biden. And I said, no, because that's just not what I'm about. So I also, also respect him. If someone else, them or someone else is saying, hey, we want to use your platform, we'll pay you. I respect yeah. him for not doing that either. There were similar conversations being had in 2020. And uh, yeah, there, and it, there was, you know, you're not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get paid for to, any, to promote. <laughs> for any political opinions. I'm yeah. not doing it. <laughs> so, That's, um, you, you're not, you're, you know, you're not, that'll never happen. Like, yeah. ever. Yeah, <laughs> same. Never. But, uh, I will say him going to stream with it is in poor taste to me, but not really when you know the, it's in poor taste for me, but when you know how streamers live their lives, they share everything with their audiences. Everything. There are some streamers, the IRL streamers, that people are just walking around all the time covering everything that they do on stream. So it's not surprising to me that he would share that with them. Um, It is. The Secret Service thing also kind of doesn't make any sense because the Secret Service wouldn't be calling to book the president on something or to gauge (laughs) interest. The Secret Service would be calling after the interview was set up to coordinate any security issues for the vice president. That's the type of way that would work. You're not going to get a call from the Secret Service that says the president um, or vice president wants to come on your podcast. They're going to have somebody that they know, knows you, reach out and see if there's interest. And if there's any way interest that's like, if you intimate that there's interest, then the Secret Service is going to call and the Secret Service is going to go, okay, this is how we have to do this. This is whose background we have to check. Yours, everybody in AMP probably Kai's people, anyone that's going to be around, everyone that's going to be near um, the asset at that point, who would be the vice president, and then we're going to make it safe, and then we're going to do the stream. So they might have reached out to somebody, and maybe Kai, and talking to this bad bitch, maybe gave the impression that he might be up for it, or didn't say no. But that's the only reason why the Secret Service will call. Uh, but there's yeah, a lot of talk I, about that. I, but really? I, I'll say this. I think they, they're, not, they're not gonna call if the interview isn't set up. They're not right. gonna call to Agreed. book her on the interview, right? Um, but if they're calling back and back and back and back, it's because they're trying to figure out people to do background checks on and how to coordinate the security for it. I will say the risk reward to me is worth it to reach out to him and see if he's interested. I agree because with that part. For, because really, if he says no, even if he does do this, what he did, that's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is that he says no and then Kai Sanat comes out and said they asked me and I didn't want to do it. That's the worst case scenario. That honestly doesn't mean anything. Like that doesn't, that's going to be a blip on the radar. It's actually a lot more significant if she were to have gotten on his stream. That would have mattered culturally a little bit and that might have reached some people. How many? I don't know. Um, We got a vice president. Vice presidential ticket running mate candidate, whatever you want to call it. Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota is her running mate. Rachel, there were a lot of guys out there. It was Shapiro, it was Bashir, it was Cooper. Um, some talk, some people talked about Newsom. There's a lot of Democrats got a deep bench, but she went with uh Tim Walls, who has really run a amazing progressive policy in Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota is one of the happiest states in the union right now. And mm-hmm. he assigned a litany of things that make me happy. Gave stu- school children access to free meals. Um, signed a bill in 2023 that codified the protections of Roe versus Wade. Uh, he has supported very progressive Im- in immigration reform. Um, just lots of things that are super. He took the budget surplus that Minnesota had that I think it was like an $18 billion budget surplus. And he took that surplus and then invested into infrastructure there. Yeah. So he uh, is not the radical lefty loon that he's going to be painted out to be, but he certainly has run a progressive agenda in Minnesota for sure. He's definitely a for the people person. You know, J.D. Vance, because of his book and where he's from, has built himself, built, him, built himself up to be this... Um, I'm for the people, I'm from where you're from, but he's really gotten away from that. When you look at Tim Walls, it's like, how can you not like the guy? 
That's, that's the, that's the energy that he gives. And, and, and that's before you even know about all the stuff that he's done. They call it the Minnesota miracle with all that he's done, building up the infrastructure, tax cuts, investing in the state, investing in the people. Um, it's, it really is a Minnesota miracle, you know, but it, like he's, He's just so likable, but I, I noticed I lost my thought. Well, I lost my thought for a second. But what I was going to say is it's, I read a post on Reddit that said it looks, it seems like this man was created in a lab and it feels that way. A Midwestern lab. I mean, if, if you're going to define yourself as a public servant, I feel like if you look that up, Tim Walls would be it. He has served this country in the National Guard, um, both here in this country and has gone overseas. He is a teacher. He was a coach. He's a congressman. He's been a governor. Now he's running for vice president. You know, there's another article that came out that says he doesn't have investments. He doesn't own stocks. He doesn't even own his house. Like he just really is about serving others and those and being a voice for those less fortunate. You know, we've seen the story go around about how he was an advisor for a queer group of students, you know, he felt, he said, as I am the perfect person to be the one to advise them because everything about me is, is the opposite of them. And so it's just like, this guy is, I see why she picked him. I, on the podcast, we thought she was going to pick Shapiro. We did not think Walls. And I think a lot of people thought that. And I thought it was interesting as I watched the media coverage with the announcement of Walls there seemed to be some people who were disappointed. They really wanted Shapiro and seemed confused mm. at the pick of Walls. Um, I think they thought that she would pick Shapiro. Obviously, he's well-liked and m- more moderate, and Walls seems to be on the more progressive side, and they thought that she could have a stronger ticket with Shapiro, but reports are saying she had better chemistry with Walls, and he expressed to her that he has no desire to be anything more than the vice president. I don't think that's what Shapiro is giving. So it seems like that they can work together in a better capacity for under her administration, knowing that he doesn't have any aspirations to be anything more than the vice president. What were your thoughts? Did you see that coverage? Did you see this? People seemed a little like confused, shocked, disappointed in the fact that she didn't go the Shapiro way. I knew that there was going to be a big hubbub if she didn't pick Shapiro because he seems to be such a star. He is, uh, he's got that thing to where if you were in a room oh, and there were 30 people talking, what happened? What are you looking at? Your text. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about that in a second. Something just dropped. I wish we could have. I wish, I wish to God that we were able to podcast tomorrow about it. We might, we might drop can in. You we not? might give y'all 30 minutes. We can. We can. We we might give y'all 30 minutes on <laughs> on what's coming out tonight, tomorrow. We might give y'all 30 minutes tomorrow. We might. Um, but Shapiro has that thing to where if there are 20 people in a room and everybody's talking and you walk past Shapiro, you'd be like, oh, let me hear what this guy's trying to say. Just, and you can't really teach it. You'd be like, oh, I wonder what, what he, what's he talking about? He just, he's, he, there's a, there's a force and a power in the way that he articulates himself um, and a charisma that he has. I'm sure he was class president in like the sixth or seventh grade or whatever. Um, There was baggage with him that doesn't exist with Walls. And that baggage came from uh, or comes from some policy positions that he has, uh, some foreign policy stuff as it relates to um, uh, the Gaza war. Uh, And then some policies that don't jibe with mainstream uh, leftist thought, school vouchers, things like that. There's baggage there. There's another situation they'd be able to hit them on. You wonder if it is in fact true that Shapiro was involved in some kind of cover up of sexual harassment, which might just be the typical oppo research that goes on with that stuff, or there might be more to it. If there's even the specter of that, can Kamala Harris hammer Trump on his uh, sexual misconduct? If there's even any type of hint of that uh, on her ticket. You have to make all those types of considerations. Uh, Walsh was probably the safer choice. Uh, Shapiro was probably the go big or go home choice. Now, like every person in the world, 
Walls has some baggage and some things that are going to be attackable as well, right? He had a DUI back in the day. Uh, it looks like he lied during the investigation of the DUI. There are some people who are speculating about the truth and accuracy of things that he said about his military service, and that's being volleyballed around right now. These are the things that they're going to use to attack him. And they're then going to say that some of his Transgender Act uh, legislation and some of the transgender legislation that was signed uh, in Minnesota is scarily progressive and far left. Um, some of the gender uh, reassignment affirming legislation that he put in there. It's a lot of stuff. You guys should look into it. It's nothing that bothers me. Um, but a lot of people that are in different swing states in the Midwest that might be less progressive or a little bit more conservative, they're going to use those things to the things to attack him as some kind of crazy radical left squad goon. Um, sure. So, I mean, that's what's going to be. You really can't attack him too much on Minnesota because the state has an incredible happiness index. Things are going pretty good in Minnesota. They're probably going to look to his handling of the aftermath of the George Floyd uh, um, verdict and, excuse me, the George Floyd the video process. and the unrest and all of that. And just depending on how you want to spin it, you could say, oh my God, he waited too long. You could say, oh my God, he put the National Guard on the streets, which Donald Trump praised him for at that point, which is now he's trying to hit him for. But he, then he appointed the prosecutor to go get Derek Chauvin. So the thing that I like when I look at him and I haven't fallen in love with him because I don't fall in love with any of these people, is that it to me, it seems like he governs the state with a sense of principle that is grounded in what yeah. he thinks being a good human being is. Absolutely. And even when he's been hard on something, he takes the time, it seems, from what we know so far, to listen to someone who may have a differing opinion and weighs it out and then will make a decision. And by that, I'm talking about his gun gun reform policy. He used to be supported by the NRA. And then after the Parkland shooting, completely changed his stance and has been an advocate for gun reform. And, and the NRA has actually turned on him. He jokes about it. He's like, I used to have a grade A, now I have a grade F. So it seems like he w pays attention to what's happening, how it affects people, really sees the humanity in it, and will change his stance. Like, but doesn't make it about him, makes it about the people. That seems to be the way of Tim Walls. That's why I say this seems to be a man who, from what we know so far, is truly of the people. I had a lot of people write me because I was posting on my social media about him. And they said, we've known about him for a while, a while here in Minnesota. And they just mm -hmm. have such a high regard for him. And it, and it, it, it makes, sense from from everything that yeah. he's put in place with Minnesota. And I totally understand why she picked him. The other criticism I've seen people say is that he's a little sit goofy. <laughs> well, you know, I don't mind that. I, don't, I think it's endearing. I think the, I like how excited goofy. that he is when they, he was announced and he took the stage. He's very excited. And I liked it. I liked to see it. I, again, I'm, I'll keep saying this. I didn't know how badly it was needed until Joe Biden dropped out. And so yeah. it's exciting to see his joy. Just going to run down some more things for you guys. Uh, we talked about the school lunches. Um, he has pledged to have 100% carbon neutral energy production in Minnesota by 2040. He signed the Police Accountab Accountability Act in light of the murder of George Floyd. Um, we talked about the fact that he quickly appointed the Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison to try the case against Derek Chauvin instead of the local prosecutor there who had very close ties to the police department. He lowered the cost of pre prescription drugs by preventing big pharmaceutical companies from price gouging the costs of medications that Minnesotans rely on, legalized adult use cannabis. He restored voting rights for 55,000 former incarcerated people. He expanded voting rights by passing... Um, the Democracy for the People Act, which allows 16 and 17 year old uh, people to pre-register to vote, signed a bill in which restored voting rights to, uh, voting rights to felons immediately after release uh, from incarceration. I mean, it's just, it, I mean, I don't, you know, the Reproductive Freedom Defense Act, which, which we talked I, about a little bit, gives patients traveling to Minnesota for abortion care from other states that have banned abortions. Uh, 
and their providers protections from legal attacks and criminal penalties. It's like, I, I was talking with my people over at P68. P68, Molly, Ray, Melissa, Daryl, shouts out, who provided me some information about Walls. And um, I just, I don't know. Like, I have to always maintain a healthy bit of cynicism. Um, but if I was just looking at a set of policies, like, <laughs> that's all the shit that I would pass. And I, the only thing that, that that I would look that I probably, that's not on here, is I would pass the Niggas in Minnesota Act that gave the black people of Minnesota $10,000 a month of UBI because uh, they black. <laughs> well, yeah, that or one didn't that. make it. <laughs> the list goes on and yeah. on and on. A tax credit for low-income parents with kids, a billion-dollar investment in affordable housing, including for rental assistance, background checks for private gun transfers, a red flag warning system uh, to take guns from people. And by the way, all this stuff is reasonable stuff. I know. Lunch for kids, reasonable. Red flag laws, reasonable. All of these things are reasonable, common sense things to make secu communities secure and, 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 and more easy to navigate, right? To make them secure and freer. I, I, I look at it like that, Rachel. Yeah. And he's rhetorically very strong as well. Like, he's probably not the wordsmith that Shapiro is, but he's very strong in speeches, on camera. Um, he's a very likable, affable guy. I'm endearing, I'm telling you. And in his spare time, he carves butter sculptures. See, that's the type of shit I'm talking about. <laughs> butter sculptures. That's a real American. But, you know, like I said, like Tim Walls, I understand you guys are excited. All the Uncle Tim, all the, the, we don't have to adopt people into the family. Into the culture. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to, we <laughs> really, I like Tim Walls. I like him. I like him. You know, just keep, he's, he, let him serve you. Let him serve you. Like when, when the waiter comes to your table and he does a good job, you don't turn around and look at the waiter and say, hey man, you want to fuck my daughter? No, the waiter did their job. Let the waiter do their <laughs> job. Maintain a relationship with the person that's supposed to be serving you, that you pay to serve you, that you've entrusted to serve you. They don't have to fuck your daughter. You don't have to let them come live at your house. Just, you know, mm -hmm. keep the line going. I, I like the guy as well. Like insofar as uh, him being a politician, okay? I like him as well. I want to know how Rachel feels about Kamala's response to the protesters that showed up at her rally last night. Did you see this, Rachel? Yes, I did. Look, and it's important to talk about this because right now we're still in the honeymoon phase with mm -hmm. Vice President Harris. The poll numbers are going crazy. The Republicans are clearly, clearly unnerved. But we talked about yeah. it here a little while ago. Uh, it's not going to be a perfect campaign. And I think that seeing the way they react and respond to something that not everybody loves and is all lovey-dovey about will be interesting the first time she really missteps. I'm not so sure she did that last night, but I think it's going to be important to see what happens when there's some adversity in the campaign. Please do check out Project 2025 because I'm telling you, it is a plan. It is a plan to weaken America's middle class. Project 2025, if he is elected. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters, but I am speaking now. I am speaking now. So Project 2025, look, if he is elected, Donald Trump intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare 
He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis, and he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. She gave that clear. No, no, she no. gave that. She gave that clear Huxtable stare after she said that. <laughs> if you didn't she think she said, was black, that look right there—that is a mother, uh, a black yeah. mom. Um, yeah. To your point about it's, she's not perfect. They're not going to have a perfect campaign. Um, you know, we're in the honeymoon phase. You're right, and I think especially in a, the state of Michigan, which we've seen what they've done when it comes to voting and how. They've rallied together with what hundreds of thousands of people who did not vote for Biden in the primary because of his stance in regards to the war. And so I think that this highlights what one of Kamala Harris's biggest issues is going to be moving forward. And we're already seeing it take uh, flight in other elections with Jamal Bowman. And now you have Cori Bush, where you are going. People are going to make decisions based on your stance when it comes to this war. And if you didn't know what, you can't really tell what those people are, those protesters are shouting, but they are shouting about genocide and how basically Kamala's supporting genocide, which why she says, if you want Trump or, or whatever she says, she's, she, she's speaking to them in regards to that comment. Um, but I think this is going to continue to be an issue for her. And I think Michigan is just the first state. She's going to, she hasn't, really done it. She's done interviews. She hasn't really taken a hard stance on where she stands with the war. And we don't know Governor Walls' stance either. And I think that this is going to be her biggest issue within the party and outside of the party. Um, Walls is a two-state solution guy. Um, he's a two-state solution guy. Uh, Kamala Harris has called for um, a ceasefire. A ceasefire. But that was back in March when she was not running. I'm talking about right mm. now, as they are the Harris Walls running this campaign, They, ha I haven't seen them make that stance. I mean, Kamala's put out the letter. She put out the letter in regards to after Netanyahu spoke um, mm. to Congress, but they haven't really addressed it. Mm. So they haven't. And they have to. So uh, the uncommitted movement says that they want a meeting with her, says that they had a small talk with her, I believe, uh, at some point. And there was some talk coming out that she was open to um, an aid embargo or an arms embargo to Israel. Uh, an aide for Vice President Harris has come out and said that that is actually not true. Uh, but they are not looking at this election from the standpoint of who's worse between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And I don't think it makes a lot of sense for anyone who's campaigning for president of the United States to say, hey, the guy coming behind me is going to be worse on this particular issue. I think on a litany of other things, you can talk about who you can organize with and what you can do and how you can feel and even the vision of the world that you see. On this particular issue, for people that are on fire about it, they want an end to the blowing up of children. Yeah. And you can't talk your way out of that. Right. You can't talk your way out of that. You can talk your way out of a lot of other issues and talk about the softer way to do it, the more moderate and comprom my, my compromising way to do it. You can't talk around the blowing up of kids or the death and war and things. You can't talk that way around it. Like, you, you can't. So she's going to have to figure out how to talk about it and talk about it directly. She's going to figure out how to have to figure out how to be strong on that podium when someone is shouting her down and her taking her space back at that podium, I don't have any problem with it. But I also want to see Kamala Harris or anyone who's in that position understand the seriousness and the severity of the chant that's coming at her. 
Understand what that means. It's not an inconvenience. It is a people's fight for their life. And as long as you look at it like that, I think you can operate with the appropriate candor and the appropriate tone that can talk to them and talk to us. Uh, I didn't say, I don't, I didn't, I didn't feel like what happened last night was necessarily bad on her part. I'm sure that they probably felt a little disrespect. And I'm not saying it was bad, but I'm saying it's going forward, it's going to have to be better than that. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. this They're is an great. issue that you're going to have to confront, right? Um, so, you know, that was a, a, a little bit up. I, I like this. I like that she stood her ground. That was I, a little bit because the because the 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 welcome into Michigan was ridiculously huge. It was robust. It was yeah, big welcome into Michigan. I I like that she said everybody's voice deserves to be heard. But right now, I'm the one who's speaking. I thought that was a, a good response. She acknowledged it. I mean, what was she supposed to do at that point? This is why the debate needs to happen too. Because she's if she doesn't talk before, she's gonna have to answer this question in the debate. I mean, she's got to, I mean, I mean, you know, we need more policy from Kamala. I mean, I, I know about her policy. I need to, I know, uh, I'm aware of the policies of the Biden-Harris administration and things that she might do differently. And, um, but I think she needs to, to make it plain. I think she will very soon. Remember, it's still a very young campaign. Still a very, very, very young campaign. And so, uh, there's probably needs to be more uh, media vetting of her. I'm sure there will be more media vetting in her. But I'll tell you this, behind the scenes, a lot of media people are getting itchy. A lot of people are getting itchy. A lot of them are getting itchy. They want Kamala to step up and do some real substantive interviews and talk to some people. Why do you think she hasn't? Itchy. Why do you think she hasn't? Well, um, I think, number one, there's probably a little tentativeness on behalf of the campaign just because things are going so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, that makes sense. If things are, going, th- things are going so well, so they go, okay, if things are going this well, uh, maybe we hold back a little bit until we have all of our ducks in a row. And also, remember, once again, very young campaign. I'm not so sure if there was any inkling a month ago, two months ago, that, w- that she would be running. So if you think about how long a campaign normally is, you normally have your whole, I know that she ran in 2020, right? But America's a different place then than it is, than it, than it, uh, it's a different place now than it was then. So I'm not saying that she's still taking time to get her stuff together, but she probably is looking at how to be the most effective in messaging what her policy, uh, her policy initiatives are. Um, so, I mean, I would expect something before or directly after the convention. But, you know, I'm not I'm not tripping. She's going everywhere. She's meeting people. She's talking to people. She's campaigning. Um, when that interview comes, it's it's going to be a big one. She's going to have to be very strategic about who she chose, chooses to do it with, for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. She can come um, here. You're more than welcome to come here. Yeah. I thought we were supposed to get her. I've, I tried. I thought we were too. I tried. I re- once she announced, I reached out again. Yeah, they say fuck y'all niggas. Now. I know her chief of staff, so I was like, "We're yeah, side for God. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on, come on, come come talk to us." And they they they're like, "Yeah, it's like maybe on some vice president shit. We we, we got the presidency <laughs> now. You know what I'm saying crip shit, president shit, VP shit, um, drugs." So, uh. <sighs> Did you see this picture of Michael Jordan's son, Marcus? He was snorting a white powder substance in Pictures. France. Pictures. you see this? Pictures. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Now, which one is Marcus? Is this the one that was this with Larsa This is with Pippen? Larsa. This is the one with Larsa. Yeah. Yeah. That nigga had to run the dope after her. Well. Damn. We don't know. Don't do that. Don't say it was after her. Damn, man. That nigga on that dope now, bro. Seriously, though, are these pictures fair? If the man is yes. treating his nose in Paris... Yes. Wait, how, how, is, if the man is treating his nose in Paris, is it, is it fair Paris. to He's put He's not in Paris. He's south of France. South and, of France, wherever. And it's 
absolutely fair. You want to be bold enough to, first off, you could find a bathroom. You couldn't turn your head. You couldn't, he, he, he must have probably already been on something because he was like, you know what? I'm in South of France. I'm having a good time. I'm just going to go ahead and take a little bit of this. And, and you could tell the third picture, he's really feeling himself after he, after he takes it up. Cause at first I was like, did they get him holding it or did they actually get him doing it? No, they get the whole thing. The whole so thing. So you think it's fair for Absolutely. you to be treating your public. nose in, 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 in France is for somebody to take pictures of you and then put the pictures on the internet? You clearly don't care. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do all of this, but you clearly don't care. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, literally the whole action it's right. is, is it's not right in the sense that they also posted it on social media. It's one thing if you're like, look at Marcus Jordan, you send it to a group chat, but like you're going to be out here exposing him. Well, I, no, I take it back. I don't care. If you want to do cocaine in public, <laughs> why, <laughs> why is it the pers- the public's responsibility to keep it private? The key word is public. Now, it'd be one thing if he was in a bathroom and somebody's like, man, I saw him go, two people go into the bathroom together. They were in there for a second. That's an invasion of privacy. It is not an invasion when you're doing it in a public space. Now, if he was like at a Soho where it's like, you're not supposed to have your cameras or phones out, then maybe, then maybe I would feel a different way. Is this nigga with some white girls too? Well, his new this girlfriend, his new girlfriend is, is like a, oh a my younger God. Larsa. Marcus, it's like don't a let him get you, bro. Hey, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. They got bro. him already. They already got him. Marcus, what do you mean? Marcus, <laughs> don't let him get you, bro. Hold on, hold on. Wait a second, 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 wait a second. This nigga Marcus is wilding. I'm just looking at the picture. This nigga Marcus got cocaine, white women, and watermelon. And a blunt. This nigga don't fucking care. Look at this. And Marcus. you want me to respect his privacy? I, I, so, so I got to I, I gotta say, I don't think it's right to put the pictures out, but man, we eat. Look, it, it's not. Can I it's also not, point something out? He's, what? he's a regular. Because that tool he's using is for people who regularly use cocaine. He didn't put it on know? the table. He didn't put it on the table. It's LA. How do you know? He didn't put it on the table. Oh, you treat you treat your nose, Rachel? Nope. I just know people who do. Rachel, have you ever treated out. your nose in your no, life? No, you've before? asked me this before and I've told you no. So okay. don't think my answer is going to change. He didn't put it on the table and chop it up. He has the tools in place mm-hmm. to get a little bumpity bump on the regular whenever he feels like it. This <laughs> is like it's and you want me to respect this man's privacy. Look at That's this girl. His girl. Look at this That's girl. That's his girl. That's his girlfriend. The and she's like, she's so happy. She's laughing about it. Like, oh, look at Marcus. Oh, can Marcus take another bump, baby? Look at Daddy. Yeah. Look at him. If I'm My Larsa girl, Pippen, if I'm Marcus. Larsa Pippen, I'm blowing Marcus that up is and going framing crazy. it. I'm blowing Why? it up and framing it. Because <laughs> they seem like have a bad breakup. And so this he basically shot. He papers, basically got a younger version of Larsa Pippen. If I'm Larsa, I'm framing it. It's going to be the be- it's going to be the backdrop in my phone. People say that it's fucking with Jordan's legacy cuz he's sniffing cocaine. How is it fucking with Jordan's legacy? The what first Jordan comment I saw on there said, "I know this. I know MJ hates him." <laughs> That's what the first comment said. You know, it was funny. Stop worshiping these people. Michael Jordan was a degenerate gambler. Like Michael Jordan had a gambling addiction. It's like he no addic- one. He's an addictive personality. Yes. Yeah, Michael Jordan was a degenerate gambler. <laughs> who, degenerate. Oh, I love Jordan. <laughs> I love Jordan. Love Jordan. Think Jordan is the coldest. It was so amazing to come up in the era of being able to watch Michael Jordan dominate. Right. But mm-hmm. he a nigga that loved pussy and gambling. Well, he ain't no saint. I don't think anybody's saying they have to like this T.D. Jake's son. He, they, I don't think this anybody's is a, this saying is the, he's a saint. The son of Jordan likes cocaine. So what? He's sniffing that cocaine with white girls. It's what gonna I, go. It's gonna go left for Marcus, man. Marcus got chill. Bro. I don't <laughs> think that he's that people are worshiping MJ. It's just more of MJ has these vices as well, but he's not so public with it. Right? It's a part of the rumor mill. It's alleged. He ain't out here 
in the same way that Marcus is. And you're coupling that with his reality TV stint, him being in a relationship with Larsa, he, you know, Michael commenting on it, saying he didn't approve. There seems to be this thirst for fame coming from Marcus Jordan. It's just a lot. Now, I can't even imagine what it is to be the son of somebody like Michael Jordan or the child of somebody like Michael Jordan. And there's so, and then you follow in their footsteps. He also was a basketball player and you've constantly been compared to this man your whole life. Like, why do you think I partly detoured from being from the law? I'm not going to be a federal yeah. judge. You're not going to be a federal nobody's judge. Called, so nobody's called. Nobody's called. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's a lot of pressure up- when you enter the same profession as your your highly successful parent. It also depends on the severity of these pictures depend on what meal this is. Because I'm not quite sure what meal this is. If this is breakfast, then it's a real problem. If this is like a it's late lunch. It's definitely the daytime. If this is like a late lunch, that's okay, right? You're getting that bumpity okay. bump up for the last half of the day or whatever, trying to get up. You love to treat your nose. All of that. Let me look at the food. But if this is breakfast, I can't see what's in the thing. I know the watermelon could be like a nice fruit. If this is breakfast. But the watermelon, it's like the plate in front of him is just the rinds. He just fucking that watermelon (laughs) up. That nigga fucking that watermelon up. That looks like She's laughing because he's eating the, I'm telling you. She's laughing because he's eating the watermelon. Look at this girl. She laughing at him. She's like, oh, my God, they really love it. Oh, daddy. Oh, look at daddy, Marcus. He's with the cocaine and the watermelon. He's, I'm he's so sweating. happy. He's, look, he's, he's, soaking, this nigga, he's sweating. His veins are popping out in his forehead. <laughs> his boy, his boy is texting. His boy is like, yo, man, his boy is on his phone. His boy is like, yo, we need another fucking bag. Marcus is fucking in the zone. He's Fucking up all these lines of coke. No, nah, I'll tell you what that. Fun. Fun. I'm fucking I'll tell you what Marcus. the friend is doing. The friend is like, "Did y'all get the shot? Did y'all get? Do I need to move my head out of the way so y'all can get the clear shot?" That's what that is. Interesting. You would say that. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Oh wait a minute. I can't tell who's with who now. No, they both with white girls. Marcus. That's, Marcus I'm telling living. you. That's his Hold girlfriend. On, Mark, boy, 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 look at Marcus. Look at Marcus. Marcus said, fuck y'all. Look at Marcus. Marcus living, man. Is that accurate? Marcus is that new nigga. Not this day on the boat. Look at Marcus. Marcus about to get straddled. Oh, oh. Hey, daddy. How are you? Okay, Father, stop. Dad. Oh, stop. God, daddy. Yeah. Marcus doing this thing, man. Y'all hating on that nigga. I'm fucking with you, Marcus. Cocaine and watermelon. The white one. <laughs> Your daddy made Millions of jumpers. And now you out here, you living. Fuck it, bruh. Fuck it. He is future. He's the new future. Stop. Kanye West appears to be on drugs as well. Um, allegedly. Milo Yiannopoulos has uh, turned on Ye. Shocking. Not really turned on Ye. I turned on Ye. I count this as turning on Ye. Do you count this as turning on Ye from Milo? he's exposing him. So I guess in a sense, it's him turning on him, right? He's saying something that, he's alleging something, but to be Mm -hmm. clear, that the public didn't know that he's claiming he was privy to. So yeah, he kept it for a secret for a while. Now he didn't. Yeah, he's turning on him. That's what that is. I don't know how you define it as anything else. According to former conservative firebrand Milo Yiannopoulos, he's still conservative, but he's kind of a former figure. Um. Ye has a celebrity dentist named Thomas P. Connolly who is supplying Ye with uh, nitrous. Laughing gas. Whippets. Allegedly. That's what he says. He says that uh, Kanye pays $50,000 a month. Oh, is that what Whippets is? It whippets like when you get it out of like the, the, the fucking, air, it's nitrous. You huff yeah. it in the nitrous. I guess yeah. I didn't, it's huffing. Get, yeah, I guess I didn't realize put the two together, but okay. And uh, that he's surprising Kanye with this, and Kanye is um is basically hooked on whippets. He says uh, that Kanye has eighty five hundred 
$850,000 titanium dentures that this dentist put in and that this dentist is taking advantage of Kanye West and other black celebrities like Lil Yachty. <laughs> um, and he says this is why he's not with Kanye anymore because Milo said that he didn't want this to happen. Then he says that uh, Kanye went into porn, which Milo knew that he wouldn't be able to uh, stick around. Milo knew that mm -hmm. Kanye mm -hmm. going into porn. Milo says that Kanye knew that going into porn would be the, the end of the road for Milo, which was why he did it to push Milo away. You know, Kanye announced that he was doing the Yeezy porn thing not too long ago. I did not see that. Um, yeah, Kanye's doing Yeezy porn. And once he announced that he was doing Yeezy porn, Milo so left. So sad. Milo says that Kanye did this because he knew that Milo would leave because Milo was critical of this doctor hmm. who was um, supplying him with the nitrous. Question. Vultures 2 just dropped. Uh, Kanye West, I'm assuming, is still pretty rich. I don't know what his finances are, but I know that he lost the Adidas deal. But even when he lost the Adidas deal, I think he was still up $400, $500 million. Uh, has Kanye West ruined his life? I mean, I would think so. I mean, how, is it not? I mean, is it repairable? Sure. I think that the, it, it, he would have to do a lot of work. But as it stands, I mean, to think of what Kanye meant to people and where Kanye was and all the things we didn't know about Kanye, I would have to say at this point, his life is in ruins, right? Hmm. Like, do people have respect for Kanye in the same way that they do? Do they take him seriously? Uh, financially, we don't know where he stands. We know he's lost a lot of his deals. Do they consume his music in the same way? Does Kanye represent to the culture what he used to represent? I'm going to say no to all those things. So to me, if you look at where Kanye was five years ago, maybe longer, to where he is now, I would have to say, yeah. Um... Now, they're saying that Vultures 2 is going to move around 68,000 album equivalent units in the U.S. in its debut week, which would put it at number two on the charts behind Taylor Swift's Still? Uh, wow. Tortured Poets Department. Um, it will be only be twice in his career that he didn't debut number one. It doesn't matter whether or not the album debuts at number one or not. CC 8,000 in the first week for Kanye West is pretty bad. Um, look, the reality of it is this, man. And here's the unfortunate thing, like when you look at it, because I am a dyed in the wool, despite the history of Kanye. I, everybody knows that, that the music was a large part of uh, of my early 20s. It was a large part of when I was coming into adulthood. Like, it was the way I wanted hip-hop to sound. Kanye West made the music that was the way I wanted music to sound. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mu music to be fun, but have some meaning, but also make you think, but also be uncompromising. But I wanted melody, and I wanted people snapping on beats. I wanted timeless hip-hop. Not hip-hop for the time. I wanted timeless hip-hop. And he made that. He made that type of music almost any time he was making music. But the thing about Kanye, he's maybe the most talented person uh, that we've ever had in the culture, and I still stand by that. But at the same time, you can make the argument that for all of his talent and all of the power and all of the, uh, the things he's been able to amass, that there's a uselessness to him. and. My dad was telling me about like being a man and you know, what it means to be a man. And what he would tell me is like, you, the, the last thing you want to be is a useless man. You don't want to be useless. You don't want people to, you don't want to not have any utility to people. You want people to be able to count on you and know that you're going to be there and know that things are going to be, are going to work out for you, uh, work out for them because you're around. You want to be useful. You don't want to be a useless man. Everyone, nobody loves a useless man is what my, what my dad would say. I think you could say that no one loves a useless person, 
But my father thought that being a useless man, that there was something specifically wrong with that. And I would agree. That's kind of what Ye kind of be, kind of became. Like he was useful creatively. He was useful um, artistically. He was useful politically and socially. But he hasn't been able to be serious enough or hasn't been able to be dependable enough in any of those things to be truly useful. Like, I can make an argument that for even his own family, right, for the future generations of people, that, like, he fucked off their entire generational wealth machine over some bullshit. That he fucked off their entire, he fucked off his great-grandchildren's birthright over a weird and destructive two-month-long anti-Semitic rant Mm -hmm. that cost him billions and billions of dollars. Huge market share. He could have one day been the CEO of Adidas. He could have done so much, been so useful, but he threw it away for nothing. Like Kanye spent this entire time being a useful voice to so many different black people and people, period, about the things that are we're up against. And then the moment that we were up against those things in a real way, he went with them. He went with Trump and he went with Milo Yiannopoulos and he went with Nick Fuentes. He went with them. Useless to us. Useless to his family. In the way that he acts sometimes. Um. And it's odd. Such a useful talent, such a prodigious talent, such a a remarkable, important, once-in-a-lifetime talent who just can't find find a way to just be a solid motherfucker. Well, if we believe that that there are mental health issues there, then you have to attribute a lot of the uselessness that we now see to that. And him surrounding himself, and him surrounding himself with people who, I mean, him not seeking the help that he may need, and him surrounding himself with to, people. You, go ahead. But no, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. him surround, and him surrounding himself with people who also are not looking out for his best interests and trying to help him get back to a place that he was. He's useless now. There was a moment in time when he wasn't. And that legacy will always be a part of who Kanye West is. And there will be a time when another generation, you know, assuming he doesn't go back to the way he was, a generation will look at him and and listen to his music and it'll mean something to them. Or they'll look back on what he said about Hurricane Katrina or other issues affecting the black community and the way they're treated in this country. And it will impact them in a positive way. But you will also have to talk about Kanye West as a whole as to to your point, the uselessness, uselessness of him and his and what he represents now. But because he used to be one way, I think he could get back there. But right now, he just doesn't have the met, the things in place to get him to where he needs to be, nor does it seem like he wants to. I'm just saying, everyone, man, talent is amazing. Talent is good. Talent builds. Uh, artistic creativity to me is the highest form of humanity. But man, you ain't nothing if people can't count on you. I'm just being for real. It's, it, 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 it don't matter how high you can flip, how far you can throw the basketball, how well you can sing. If people can't count on you, nobody's perfect. I'm not talking about you being perfect. I'm not talking about people not having issues in their relationships. And I'm not talking about people making mistakes. I'm talking about if people cannot count on you, if you are not solid and dependable and consistent, it don't matter how talented you are. It don't matter what you could do. Because all that means is everything that you build, you're going to burn. 
And if everything that you build, you burn, all you're really doing is polluting the earth because you're leaving ruins and you're taking up space. So, I don't know. It's just, I look at this whole thing and forget about him being on Whippets, once again, his business. I'm like, why is Kanye fucking with Milo Yiannopoulos? Why is Kanye fucking with Nick Fuentes? Like, okay. Um, all right. We're out of here. What we want to tell you guys is tonight, Carisha uh-huh. is doing a special episode of Carisha Please where she's going to address oh, all of the on. Diddy stuff. It doesn't, it, it doesn't come on regularly, but it comes on. She only does a Carisha Please like once every six weeks or a month or whatever, whatever. She hasn't done one in a while, but she's doing a Carisha Please where she's going to talk about all the Diddy stuff. And she's going to tell her side of the story. And it was teased while we were doing the podcast. And I guess, um, I guess uh, it'll be interesting. So if there's anything truly interesting that comes out, maybe we'll jump on and give you guys a little something tomorrow if we can, if everybody has time and the bandwidth. I don't want to put too much on everybody's plate uh, um, because that means that Ashley has to work. That means that a bunch of other people have to work and stuff like that too. So if it's anything worth that, maybe. But who knows if it'd be worth that. What, or what, do you, what would you want to know from Carisha? Nothing. <laughs> I'm, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, I thought it was interesting when you said it in the group chat, but well, I was kind of like, do it then. "Huh? No, no, no! I'm gonna, I'm going to pay attention to it." But I was kind of like, "Huh? All right." <laughs> I want to. I want to hear from, if if it was. I want to hear from Cassie. <laughs> well, I don't think she's gonna get that one. No, I don't think, and I don't think she should. But if I was going yeah. to, that that's who I'm more interested in hearing from. But you know, we'll wait and see. Maybe I'll change my mind. Stranger things have happened, but not. Nah. All right. Take think caps off. Do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys. <laughs>